this is Dawn. Welcome to another art adventure. Today we are going to be working on painting tall and short grasses. So before we get started with that, I would like to show you what materials we're using in case you would like to stop the video and go and get materials and get set up to follow along. Uh, the first thing that we that I'm going to be using is this set of watercolor stamps from the Art Impressions Company. This is foliage set number 4051, and the stamps that we're using out of this set are the tall and short grasses and two different shrub styles. So it'll be this one and this one and this one and this one. You will need some acrylic blocks to mount your stamps to for stamping. You will need a number four or number six watercolor brush, a small container for water, and then either a paper towel or something to take some of the water out of your brush. So my favorite method is to tap the brush on this little okay. chamois that comes from the Lawn Fawn Company in this cute little holder, but a folded up piece of paper towel would work just fine uh, for that part as well. And the other thing that I'm using today is a Marvy Le Plume 2 watercolor marker that has a brush tip on one end and a fine point on the other, and I'm using a bottle green. But you can use any color of green watercolor marker that you might have. Tombow's work, um, Marvy's work, any watercolor marker. The surface that I'm painting on is a four by six piece of Canson cold press watercolor paper. You can buy these in a four by six tablet. Because of the amount of painting that I do, I prefer to get a nine by 12 tablet and then I simply cut them pieces into fourths and have a stock pre-cut and ready every time I'm ready to start painting. So we're going to create a swatch, and I will make a little disclaimer right up in uh, front with this. This is not something that I created on my own. I first saw it uh, from a friend and student who was in one of my classes. So a shout out to Susan for sharing this great idea with me. And I um, think it accomplishes a couple of goals. First of all, when you purchase these stamps, it's often hard just by looking at the stamp card that comes with it to get a real feel for what this stamp can do. These are great black and white images that give you the crispness and the detail, but they really don't tell you about the subtleties of what happens when you put add water and, and create a watercolor out of them. So these are very helpful because as you're getting ready to plan a scene, you can flip through these if you create them and, and put a little punch in the corner and hook them together with a ring. What I prefer to do is cut these cards to be slightly smaller than the four by six. And I keep my art impression sets in these photo containers. And so I cut them down and keep them right in the box with the set so I can look at, this, at them this way. So this does two things. It gives you a, a journal, a swatch card set, but it also provides you with some very good practice and some examples that you can go back and refer to as you're learning for what different techniques do, because you might want to use one technique in one card and another technique in another one. So I, ahead of time, created this little template and what I want to compare today is what happens when I stamp a tall grass and a short grass. I ink up the stamp once and stamp it. I ink it up again and stamp it. I ink it up another time and stamp it. And I move across the row that way. So I'm going to put my short grasses on the acrylic block. I'm going to put the so flat side of the brush end of the marker on that stamp and just color it down and I'm going to stamp it one time. Ink it up. 
stamp it down again. And I do this as long as I want to travel across this. If it's at the base of a barn. Now I'm going to come to the other side. I'm going to ink that stamp once and I'm going to stamp it down multiple times, overlapping. And you can see how this looks like individual clumps and this looks like more of a long line of grass. I'm going to repeat that a second row because I want an example of what it looks like before I have softened it with water and then after I do the softening, which we'll talk about. For these card swatches, it doesn't really matter how many times you stamp it off or whether or not it's a straight line. On this side though, stamp it until you can see that the image really begins to fade. Okay, so those look pretty similar. I'm going to leave the first line just the way it looks when I finish stamping it. Now I'm going to go in and dampen my brush, get some of the water out, and I'm going to soften these lines in this stamp in the direction that grass grows. Notice I'm not doing this motion. I'm trying to follow what I call the gesture or the feeling, the way the, the grass grows, because then if I get some of these little lines that pop up above, they're grass-like. As you do more and more practice, you will develop a style for how much water creates the effect that you like to see in your paintings. More water causes the pigment to move out into the watercolor paper. Less water leaves more defined little stamped lines. So I'm going to intentionally pull this one up a bit because I want to show you in a minute another technique. So that one got pretty runny and bold, more so than I would like. But again, that's going to be an example. Now I'm going to move over here with a clean brush, some of the water tapped off, Notice that I'm not trying to paint each individual line. I'm simply dragging that brush in the direction that grass grows over the top of those lines. And sometimes it goes higher than the line. So these start very bold and get lighter and lighter and fade off until they're just kind of distant little marks over here. This is very handy as we think about grasses and shrubs and details in the front of a painting closer to us being more distinct and more defined. And the same grasses down by our feet will appear bigger as we look at them than those that are off in the distance. So this is a great technique to learn how to do that. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a taller grass. The exact technique, so if you're just catching up with your own stamping, don't worry. This is the same technique, just with a larger grass stamp. Color it. Stamp. Now I'll go to the other side. 
And sometimes people ask, well, how many times do you stamp it? And the answer is um, as many as you want until it either fades out entirely or you get the desired effect. And then you can even go back in um, and, and stamp it again if you want to continue across the surface. All right, so now I've got my short grasses, just a stamped image, my short grasses that have been softened with a little bit of a damp brush. I always forget to stamp two lines so that I have a version with water and a version without water. If you're following along, you may only get the short grasses done, but the technique is identical with the tall grasses. Okay, there we go. Now I'm ready to go in with my watercolor brush. And begin to pull that color. Remember that this will dry and look much different than it does while you're doing it. Look how these changed as they dried. So go easy, you can always go back in. Notice if I wanted to have a little bit more motion there, all I have to do is put a little bit more water in there and I can actually pull that more. Okay, now we'll go over here. Okay, so again, we have the same effect with adding the water with the darker stamped image and then becoming lighter. This is an important technique that I'm going to show you in an actual card front here in a minute. So when I do these, I like to make sure that I go in and label everything. So I put the stamp set number up here in the corner in case it gets away from its box and container. I like to mark which ones I've softened with water um, mostly as a help to you. Once you've done it, it's going to be very clear which ones have been softened and which ones haven't. And now our goal is to create what looks like a natural grass pattern. And we can do this by combining the tall and the short grasses and the number of times we stamp off to create kind of a rolling grass area, a field that isn't perfectly flat. So I'm going to stamp it multiple times, but I'm also going to not keep it in an exact straight line. I'm going to make it look a little more clumpy. Leave some spaces. Now I'm going to go in with the smaller grasses ink them up the same way and okay now if I go in and soften that clump I'm going to start in the darker areas because I'll get pigment on my brush Now I can go into some of the shorter grasses. So this creates a fun way to get some variety and some movement. 
now you have an opportunity. You could tuck some little flowers in there. You could add some different kind of foliage. You could tuck these grasses around um, a container at the base of a birdhouse, anything that you might want to do. And this creates a lot of interest and, and pulls the eye into the painting a little better. So I promised you that I would talk about what happens if you get too big in an area like that. If you have a lot of space around your this area that bloomed or, or grew too much, you can always go in and ink up a stamp again and stamp right over the top of that to bring back some detail. So I will do that in the one right next to it. So if you get too much bloom and you lose the detail, you can always go back in and stamp it over the top. And then once it's dry, pull it just a little bit. But in this case, I have this big green blob that is really not what I wanted. So I take a very clean brush and I put water, let it soak into this watercolor paper over that area that grew too big. Now I take a little piece of a clean paper towel and stamp that or tap that down. And often, if I do it a couple of times, I can lift some of that color. The important thing is to make sure you have a clean brush and clean water when you're going in to do it. And the other determining factor is whether or not the pigment in a particular marker is staining or non-staining. That's something you'll just have to practice with your set. And that would be a, another whole lesson that I would do on how to create a swatch and determine which of your markers are staining or not staining. So that's how we do the tall and short grasses. Here's an example of how I use these grasses at the base of this bicycle in order to create this card front. It creates a very natural looking base and foundation for the bicycle. Thank you very much for joining me today. I look forward to getting together with you again soon. This bicycle will also become a future lesson that I'll put together for you. If you like today's activity, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so that you get notification of future get togethers. Thank you.